Hello Matt, I've got a really sore throat and I will explain why in just a second. Okay, so seeing how I was in America over the last week, I got a lot of cinnamon flavoured sweets and I believe that the cinnamon in those sweets has made my throat absolutely raw. I mean, it's not sore, but you can definitely hear that there's something wrong with it. So yeah, I'm really sorry about that, Matt. So I hope you have entertainment in hearing myself have a really raw voice for the next 10 minutes. Now, I've not really been thinking about your punishment, but I'm pretty sure it's not going to involve cinnamon. And don't make mine involve cinnamon, please, because one, you've had too much, and two, it's done this to me. You really do not want this voice for very long, do you? So if I was to go on holiday to any other place in the USA, where would it be, you asked? Well, um, that would have to be Los Angeles, home of film and every other thing, hot desert thing, scene, beach, yeah, awesome LA. I'm not a big fan of gambling, so Las Vegas is out. I've already been to Orlando, so there's no real reason to go back. And there's not really anywhere else that I would go. I'm not into the politics, so no Washington DC for me. And you said you went to Virginia. Well, that's not necessarily specific. I know you went somewhere in Virginia, but that's not very specific because that's a state. And states are very massive and vast. They're bigger than the UK, some of them. I mean, New York City is massive, but New York State goes north way further than that. But it would have to be Los Angeles is where I would go on holiday again if I went. However, it's pretty expensive, I know, and I'm probably not going to go there until... I don't know, like maybe I'm 30 at least. And even that's pushing it. Right, so Matt, I wanted to talk a little about American television. Oh, the glories of American television. What I watched on NBC and Fox and ABC and all that jazz. Well, aside from in the morning, they have that inflatable woman outside the Rockefeller Center on the breakfast show. Later on in the evening on Fox, there's this show called Beach Shazam. Now, you want to know what Beach Azam is? Well, even I don't really know, but I know it's a quiz show about music hosted by Jamie Foxx. Yes, the star of Django Unchained and Ray, Oscar winner, has been reduced to hosting a quiz show all because of Sleepless. We don't have those kind of quiz show hosts. We have Noel Edmonds and Nick Knowles. But in America, they've got so much money poured into their television that they have Oscar winners as their quiz show hosts. However, one could argue Jamie Foxx's hands aren't perfect for building a house. But onto the content of the show itself, all it was was trying to name the piece of the music that was playing. And they obviously put way too much money into getting Jamie Foxx as the host and not a lot of money into figuring out the content of the show. And on top of that, the biggest salt in the wound. I honestly prefer Nick Knowles as a presenter than Jamie Foxx. So yeah, you can probably tell American television isn't very good. At least their crap television is all funded by advertisers, whereas our crap television on BBC is funded by ourselves. But that does lead me on to my question of the vlog, Matt. What do you think is the worst show on television? Now, Beach Azam has to be on that list for me, uh, but... Then again, I don't really watch a lot of bad television. The worst television show I've ever seen. There was this weird, really weird spy thing with Richard Hammond that was on like five years ago, maybe even longer. And if I recall, the concept was they tried to frame people. Who, well, the kids tried to frame other kids for some stupid thing. If I also remember correctly, the show was axed after two episodes, so everyone agreed with me that that show was complete and utter crap. But then again, I can't remember the name of it, thank God. Right, so today's movie review probably is going to be very long, because I don't like the way I'm talking right now, but hey, you see from the title, it's Logan. Right, let me just start this vlog by saying that I watched Logan on the plane going to New York, which isn't the best method for watching a movie. Last time I watched a movie on a plane before that was going to Florida and it was Space Chimps and I never reviewed it but if I did Space Chimps would be worse than Thunderbolt and Lightfoot. But then again, Logan. Now X-Men isn't my preferred movie franchise, I haven't actually seen any of the movies which is a shame but then again Hugh Jackman in an interview once said that Logan isn't really 
um, exclusively aimed for fans of X-Men, so I felt comfortable watching it on the plane in the selection. I wanted to watch it in the cinema, but it came, it came, went off cinemas like way before I could actually get an opportunity to see it. So I saw it on the plane going to New York. And let me just say, it could be one of the greatest movies I've ever seen. And I'm not even lying, it seriously is that good. Now, I'm sure you've seen several reviews out there already about Logan being one of the best superhero movies ever. And yeah, it all really centers around the acting and the story. Now, they're both really down to earth and dark. The story's set, I think, uh, 20 years after the events of the last um, film with Wolverine in, like the last actual film with him in. Um, and it's basically him, he's not really been a superhero for ages, still got his powers, but he doesn't really know how to use them anymore. He's caring for Professor X, but they find there's a plot to um, defeat them, and there's a new band of mutants, um, one of which is a young girl, um, and Logan, uh, Dash Wolverine, and uh, Professor X have to basically get her to a retreat. Uh, to save all the other young mutants uh, from being killed by these um, villains. So the story is pretty standard, but what it's made up for is the performances. Yeah. Now, this will probably be a contender for best leading actor in Hugh Jackman. The emotion he gets across, the fact that he's a fallen warrior, and yeah, he really gets a cross performance. That's really, really good. And that's all I can really say. It's just really good. No complaints about his performance at all. Um, it's like in all the right places and just, yeah, amazing, amazing performance. And every other character in the movie is also really played well as well. Uh, Patrick Stewart obviously always does his damnest and Stephen Merchant as well um, plays a pretty decent role. The villains aren't necessarily the most memorable but they do pose a bit of a threat. I suppose one of the biggest threats in the whole movie is actually just the fact that Wolverine's aged and the movie deals with that perfectly. And then there's the young girl. Um, now it's the only performance by a child actor I've ever seen who's managed to screen their way through a performance and it still actually be pretty good. The one thing I'd have to say is when she speaks it is a bit of that child actor Disney level quality that they sometimes get but when she doesn't speak she's really good. But another thing that helps the story along is its pacing. I've not seen a movie paced this well in god knows how long. Like the fact that every decision leads into the next scene and every sort of decision sort of has a reason for existing. It, it's just really incredible. And the action's also very memorable as well. It's just a really memorable, well-paced movie. And it's just, you get sucked into it immediately. When you're watching it, you see the hardships that Wolverine's going through and you're just like, I understand what he's going through. I will watch this movie, even if it's on a plane, and I will love it. If I was to say there were a few complaints about the movie, but they're so minor, literally, these complaints are so minor. Uh, there's a scene that happens about two thirds, three quarters of the way through the film that's really pivotal, but I feel it maybe could have been handled a little bit better. You know the scene I'm talking about, I hope, I, I hope people do, but there's a really pivotal scene that happens, and I feel it could have been handled a bit better, even though it's still handled really well. And then um, the ending song, I thought, I like Johnny Cash, but I probably should have used her at the start of the end credits. And I said a few, but now nah, those were my only two minor complaints. And yeah, without a shadow of a doubt, Logan is... It's going to be hard for any movies to top it this year. I mean, there is The Last Jedi, but yeah, um, Logan seriously, seriously is amazing. It'll probably end up with me watching the other X-Men movies. That's how just how good it is for me to watch the other X-Men films. Overall, you know how great I'm going to give it. Or Spectacular. Right, thanks for watching the vlog, man. I promise my voice will be better soon. But thanks for watching. See you on Saturday.